Hey everyone, I am Ashley Billington and this is The Campfire. Today, we are taking a look at District 5, 6A, who many feel could be the toughest 6A district in the state. After realignment, this district consists of Allen, Braswell, Geyer, Little Elm, McKinney, McKinney Boyd, Prosper, and Rock Hill. Rock Hill moves up from 5A to 6A and their reward? They get to play teams like Geyer and Allen every year. Good luck with that. Let's start things off with analyzing all these teams in our film session. Big time coaching moves in this district, especially at the top. The first and second place teams have new head coaches as Allen welcomes Lee Wigginton and Geyer promotes Reed Heim. Allen has some experience coming back as quarterback. Mike Hawkins returns along with tight end Steven Gorski and running back Devin Turner. The Eagles defense should keep them in the running for a title as they are led by Zena Umeazulu. At Geyer, the Wildcats have the best quarterback in the state in Jackson Arnold as he hopes to lead Geyer to their third state title game in four years. They will be looking for a running back, but their defense will be led by the Bowen brothers. Prosper should be in the mix again for a district titles. They return 3,000 yard passer Harrison Rosar. The Eagles should also be strong in the trenches on defense. Looking for a dark horse, how about the McKinney Lions? They bring over Keldrick Luster from Frisco Liberty as quarterback and have what some think is the best running back in the class of 24 in Brian Jackson. McKinney Boyd replaces Joe McBride with Daniel Foster as head coach, and they will bring back running back Sheldon King and quarterback Ryan Shackleton. Denton Braswell should also battle for a playoff spot. The Bengals have a couple of the best defensive backs in the district with Dylan Smith and Bryson Cornelius, but they do lack depth. Little Elm only picked up one win last year and have Joe Castillo stepping in as the new head coach. They'll be led by defensive back Chase Davis. Rock Hill moves up from 5A and will hope young quarterback Kevin Sperry can lead them to a win or two. I'll tell you what, this district is so stacked that the fifth or sixth place team would probably finish second in many other 6A districts. All right, let's dig even deeper into 5-6A as we bring in our inside high school sports insider, Matt Diggs, along with producer Ward Fasol for our district breakdown. All right, it's district breakdown time, and we are talking to 5-6A with my main guy, Professor Diggs. Diggsy, uh, 5-6A, in my eyes is a it's it's no wonder these guys go far in the playoffs because they play a playoff district they're so power stacked in this district that's why prosper could sneak in as the fourth team and go three four five rounds in the playoffs and it doesn't look like it's going to change in now because mckinney mckinney boards are coming up too so talk to me about this district and what you see yeah i mean we're, we're, we're feeling very patriotic as we're nearing the fourth of july and, and thinking of fireworks and when i think of fireworks i'm thinking of five six a because this district as you as you highlighted in your open is just incredible i mean you're you're going to spend more time looking for cutting down the highlights i think you're just going to want me to blabber for 20 minutes just so you can get the highlights of all the star players in this district in our our, our footage reel because it is so talented i mean it, it's almost like the sec of uh, of of high school football in this district and one thing i think is going to be an x factor when you look at this district is we have coaching turnover of almost over half of the district in this district now uh so i mean and coaches have only been here three or four years are now considered the elder statesmen uh when you think of mckinney and prosper uh because we have complete turnover and uh, and how are they how are the how is the teams how are the programs going to respond to their new coaches i i think you've seen it sometimes with cedar hill and, and lancaster uh, sometimes when you have that big name star coach come in uh, and work out for a while. It's hard to fill the shoes. And let's just recap at one time. Allen one, DeGuyer two, Pros uh, McKinney three, Prosper four, McKinney Bob Boyd five, Denton Braswell six, Rock Hill seven, Little Elm eight is my official 5-6-A prognostication. And we will see you next week for 6-6-A as we are headed to the home stretch, getting ready into July, getting ready for football. I can smell the AstroTurf and, and, and the field turf just cooking right now. Dixie and Waze will have even more about this district on our social media platforms this Wednesday. Now, let's take a look at some of the athletes you should keep an eye on in this district and our players on the rise. Let's start with possibly the best quarterback in the state, Jackson Arnold of Denton Geyer. 
Arnold was thrown into the fire as a freshman when he was an emergency replacement for the Wildcats in the state title game. Things didn't go as planned, but since then, Arnold has been outstanding. He threw for just under 4,000 yards and 34 touchdowns with just five picks last year as Geyer made it to the state final again. Everyone has recruited the strong-armed Arnold for a while, but he verbally committed to Oklahoma. Allen's Devin Turner was one of the best backs in the district last year. He ran for 1,047 yards and 18 touchdowns as the Eagles finished 11 and three. Devin will share the load with Kevion Sibley in the Allen backfield. Turner has offers from UNLV in Washington State, but look for more to come during his senior year. On the defensive side of things, Geyer's Peyton Bowen is a dynamic force for the Geyer Wildcats. Last year, Bowen picked off six passes and made 59 tackles. Bowen is primarily a safety, but can play multiple positions in the secondary as well, as being a dangerous threat in the return. Peyton plays along the side with his brother Eli in the Wildcat defensive backfield. Bowen verbally committed to Notre Dame in January. The strength of the Braswell defense is also in the secondary, led by cornerback Dylan Smith. As a junior, Smith had 25 tackles, four picks, and one interception. He brought back for a house call. Smith prides himself on his explosiveness and ball skills. Dylan's older brother, Cam, is a cornerback at Oklahoma State. So guess where Dylan verbally committed to? That's right, he's headed to Stillwater. They call it flying under the radar. And that's exactly what the McKinney Lions hope to do in 2022. They are more than content to let all the attention go to Allen, Geyer, and Prosper while they do their thing quietly. Or if a sold caught up with the Lions head coach, Marcus Shavers, to talk about the district and see if McKinney can squeeze into the postseason in our media day segment. All right, it's media day, 5, 6, 8. We're talking with McKinney head coach Marcus Shavers. Coach, man, you look at this district, yeah, you throw Rock Hill in there, and that's fine and dandy, but I, we looked over it earlier, me and my man Professor Diggs, and we say the sixth place team in this district could probably finish second in every DFW 6A district. How tough is it for you guys I mean, to, to fight through this district, and does it toughen you guys up to – you know, not only for that particular season, but for seasons down the line. Yeah, it's tough. And I think you spot on with that. We were that sixth place team, you know, last year in this district. And so um, it's good football play. There's good football players in this district. There are really good coaches in this district. Um, and you got to bring it every week. And, it, and, and I think there's a lot of parity, um, you know, more parity than probably people – uh, give credit, you know, I think our players, we, we all got good players. They're good players everywhere. You said throw Rock Hill into this district and nothing's fine and dandy about <laughs> playing Rock Hill. I'm looking the other day, Rock Hill's got a quarterback that's got a power five, you know, offers from, you know, division one schools. And so he's a sophomore. And I'm like, golly, you know, you jump out the frying pan into the fryer. But uh, it, that that's what you want because you know that if you can go and compete, in that district, and some people opt to go to lesser. A lot of people don't want to go play these type of folks every year. Um, but but we're just not the you know kind of program that, that runs from that competition. You just you're in it, and if you're able to have success in it, you know you got a really good team that can go compete with anybody in the state. And so you want to find out about yourself. You want to find out the kind of coach you are. You want to find out what type of player you are. Uh, there's no. Uh, better test than District 5, 6, 8. I wish you luck this year. I appreciate you joining me today. We'll post the entire interview on all of our social media platforms this Friday, or you can hop on over to the Campfire extended version on our podcast and listen to everything right now. But that's going to do it for this week's show. Join us next week when we talk 6, 6A and find out what Louisville ISD or Plano ISD teams will make a run at the title or maybe it's Coppell's year. We'll dive into that next week. You can keep up with everything on the high school football scene on our Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram accounts. Until next time, I am Asha Billington, and thank you so much for watching the campfire. <laughs>